Let me tell you a story. Two men walk into a bar. And they got into a fight. Louis Auguste Silbari was arrested and taken to the Saint Pierre prison, where he was locked in a dungeon. This all happened on the French colonial island of Martinique in the Caribbean in 1902, in the midst of an election campaign. On this April morning, Fernand Clerc stepped outside to admire the view. He was master of all he surveyed, the factories that turned the island's trees into furniture and the fields of sugarcane and coffee. That's strange. Why would there be frost on such a sunny, warm morning? But it wasn't frost. It was ash from the volcano, Mount Pele. When the ash began to fall, Clara Prentice, wife of the American consul, considered going home to Massachusetts. No, but that was out of the question. There was the gala she planned for the following week. Postponing it was unthinkable. And there were many who were too poor to leave their meager possessions and flee the city of Saint-Pierre for a safer part of the island. Others, with the means to do so, departed on boats. Mayor Fouché worked late into the evening, drafting detailed plans for the Ascension Day banquet and ball. Meanwhile, below, servants cleaned ash from the banquet hall in preparation for the event. The closest thing to a scientist on the island of Martinique was an elementary school teacher named Gaston Lan. Lan actually made a pilgrimage to the newly awakened volcanic crater and shared his observations of heightened activity in the newspaper. But Lan was more concerned about his forthcoming trip to Paris. He was to display samples of the island's plant life along with the lecture he had been asked to give. But with the ash falling at this rate, his specimens would all be ruined. Mayor Fouché mustered enough resolve to create a new poster. Fellow citizens, be not afraid. No lava flows can reach the city in the near future. We have seven kilometers between us and the volcano. The amount of lava would have to be impossibly huge to cross the two immense valleys and the swamp between us and Mount Pele. <coughs> In the early hours of May 7th, the people of Saint Pierre awoke to thundering seismic tremors and volcanic lightning near the mouth of the hellish volcano. Now, Mass panic began to spread. Troops were dispatched to try and calm the public. And then, just before the dawn of Thursday morning, May 8th, the volcano became utterly calm. The air was cool and fresh, and the sea like glass. When Mount Pele erupted at 8.02 a.m. on May 8th, 1902, the explosion produced a sound so loud 
It was heard 500 miles away in Venezuela. The massive pyroclastic flow, a death cloud of superheated gases, crossed the valleys to the city in minutes. The explosion was the equivalent of just one strategic nuclear warhead. Three days after the eruption, men from the other part of the island combed the still smoking streets of Saint Pierre to collect the bodies and burn what the volcano had failed to consume completely. Few have ever experienced what Louis Auguste Silbarri endured and lived to tell. When the volcano erupted, he heard the screams of his captors briefly before a terrifying silence. And then a fierce heat came blasting through the tiny vent in his cell. He hopped and jumped around to avoid it, but was still severely burned up to his shoulders. For three days, he suffered in agony with no other sustenance than the moisture on the walls of his cell. His sentence to solitary confinement in the thick-walled dungeon had saved his life. He was one of only two survivors of the 30,000 citizens of Saint-Pierre. What about us? Would we know when to sound the alarm? Can we see what's coming? 